So far, we have seen that the number of ways to count ordered samples with replacement is in choose R. Uh, ordered samples without replacement is n factorial over n minus r factorial. And then if we take that number and divide it by r factorial, we get the number of unordered samples without replacement. So it's finally time to talk about the number of unordered samples with replacement. And the reason we've saved that one for last is it's a little bit more complicated than the ones we've done so far. So we're going to start with an example, and then we'll see how this generalizes. Let's suppose we have five activities to do on a three-day vacation between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It is not important what order the activities are done in, nor which are done on what day. All we care about is how many activities are done each day. Another way to say this is that we care about the distribution of the activities. All right. So here are a couple of examples of the things that I'm counting. Let's say that maybe I do two activities on Friday. two on Saturday, and one on Sunday. All right, that's a perfectly valid way to distribute my activities. Um, or perhaps I could do them all on Saturday. Nothing stopping me from doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a way to visually represent each one of these distributions in a way that's easy for us to count. So I'm going to write down a bit string where I put a zero for every time I do an activity on a particular day and I separate those zeros with ones. For example, I'm going to put two zeros to represent the fact that I have two activities on Friday. I'm going to separate them with a one. I'm going to put two zeros for Saturday. I'm going to represent them with a one, sorry, separate them with a one, and I'm going to put two zeros on Sunday. So this is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. For this bit string, I have no zeros at front because I have no activities on Friday. So I'm going to put a one. Then I'm going to put all five of my zeros in between the two ones for Saturday, and I'm going to put no ones for Sunday. So there's nothing over here. Five zeros, nothing over here. All right, so we make the observation that there is a correspondence between any distribution and a bit string. So for any distribution, I can write down one of these bit strings, and for any one of these bit strings, I can write down a distribution. Well, we've already learned how to count bit strings. Remember from a few videos ago that once I know how many characters my bit string has, and once I know how many ones or zeros I want, I know how many of them there are because I can't repeat the character and it doesn't matter what order the zeros are in. All that matters is that a character is a zero or a one. We learned that a bit string with seven characters That's embarrassing. And five zeros. There are seven, choose five of these. So for example, let's say that I'm gonna do four activities on Friday and one activity on Sunday. All right, well, there's my bit string. It doesn't matter what order the zeros are in. I could swap the position of those two zeros and not change anything. And once I've spent a character, I can't get it back. So these are unordered samples without replacement. So there are seven choose five of these bit strings. Uh, seven is because I've got to do five zeros and two ones. There's gonna be one fewer ones than categories. And five is the number of zeros. So there are 
7 choose 5, which is 7 factorial over 5 factorial 2 factorial. We can write 7 factorial as 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. Uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 7 times 3 is 21. There are 24 such bit strings and also vacations. Again, the number of zeros is controlled by the number of activities. Uh, the number of ones is one fewer than the number of days, because if I have three days, I only need two ones separating them. You can think about it as if you take a three-day vacation, there's two nights on that vacation. And here's uh, the summary of what we just did. To make an unordered sample with replacement, we write down a bit string with a zero for each time an object is sampled, and we separate the zeros for each object with a one. So there's going to be R zeros and there's going to be N minus one ones. All right, so the total number of characters is going to be N minus one plus R. And then to choose R of those to be zeros, the total number of ways to do that is N minus one plus R choose R. And by the formula for the binomial coefficient, that's equal to N minus one plus R factorial over n minus 1 factorial times r factorial. Okay, so we've seen that with the other three sample types, there is some sort of prototype mathematical object they're counting. For example, ordered samples with replacement count finite sequences. Uh, unordered samples without replacement count subsets. So unordered samples with replacement count something called a multiset. A multiset of cardinality r from the set omega is actually a function. So this is not going to be a set because sets don't allow repetitions. This is a function called alpha that takes every element of our universe and assigns to it a natural number called its multiplicity. And we require that the sums of all of these numbers equal r. Uh, notice that if alpha is at no more than one for each of these elements, then you're just a set because you're not repeating elements. Alpha is the number of times the element appears in the multiset. So like I said, a multiset is not a set because sets do not allow for repetition. However, we often use set theoretic notation to write down multisets. So let's let omega be the set ABC. That's going to be our universe. And our multiset is going to have cardinality 5. So one multiset is A twice, B twice, and C once. This is like our Friday, Friday, Saturday, sun Saturday, Sunday distribution. All right. Well, we could also write that as a squared, b squared, c. And when I say a squared, I don't mean that I'm taking the element a and multiplying it by itself because a might not have multiplication. But what I mean is that a is in the multiset twice. So alpha of a is 2 because that's how often it appears in the multiset. Alpha of b is also 2. And alpha of c is just 1. And notice that if you add 2 plus 2 plus 1, you of course get 5, because that's the cardinality of the multiset. All right, let's see another example. Let's have b, 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 c, c. I could also write that as the multiset b cubed c squared. Again, not actual cubing and squaring. In this case, alpha of b is equal to 3, alpha of c is equal to 2, and alpha of a is equal to 0 because it does not appear. And 3 plus 2 equals 5. And we have finished our table. We have figured out how to count ordered and unordered samples both with and without replacement.